Welcome inside of Archers Arena here in Cardiff for tonight's Women's Basketball League fixture between Cardiff Met Archers and the London Lions live here on Cardiff Met Sport TV. Last time we were here at the King Coyd campus, the Archers lost to the Essex Rebels, but since then they've bounced back with a win against Durham. My name is Ali Hampson Silk and I'm here today with today's commentator for the match, Tom Guntrip. Tom, the atmosphere is building, the music is pumping. What can we expect from today's match? Well, the Lions play a really fast-paced style. You know, they've got some really good GB talent, a couple of really nice Americans. The Archers like to slow things down. They're not one of the highest scorers in the league, but they're quite good defensively, so it's really a very contrasting set of styles for today's game. And you say they're top of the match, top of the league London Lions. Why? What makes them so good? Well, Kennedy Leonard is probably one of the best players in the league. A young British point guard. You know, she, she can pass, she can steal, you know, she can do it all. She can shoot, she can hit three, she's got everything. And Cassie Green might be one of the best five shooters I've ever seen in the WBL. You know, she gets her feet set, it's going in more often than not. And the Archers, they've got a few injuries today. What will that do for the team? Yeah, I mean, Mara's uh, out with a broken nose. We saw it and she injured it here against Essex Rebels. She, you know, she's the biggest player on the team. She's got really nice post moves. She's a, she's a, a dominant threat on one end. And she, she blocks shots and she rebounds on the other. They're now quite undersized. And, and against a team that is as big as London Lions, yeah. they are really going to have to work hard on the defensive rebounds. Definitely. It's going to be a bit of a struggle. Um, so what will they have to do today in this match? Yeah, I think that, that Coach Stephon, she's going to be re-emphasizing really double down on the defensive glass. You know, they're the, actually the worst rebounding team in the league at both ends and they're going to be desperate to make sure that as soon as London Lions miss a shot, they get the ball, they can go the other way and they can play their game. If they can't control the glass, they're really going to struggle to build any momentum. Definitely, definitely. Well, fingers crossed. But speaking of coaches here at Archers, we've got a lot of experience, not just in Steph Collins, but also in Sarah Wagstaff. And we caught up with her back in December to hear all about her Archers coaching Archers. I'm Sarah Wagstaff and I'm the head coach of our Women's Division 1 National League team and also our under 18 women. I think I've always had a passion for teaching and coaching and I think back to when I was in primary school when I first ever started playing netball as it was at the time um, and I always loved you know, teaching my, my brothers and things and then I moved to secondary school and I was just so inspired by my PE teachers that I then realised that actually I wanted to, to coach. I think back to my secondary school teachers and if it wasn't for Tara Allen at the time I wouldn't have been involved in the sport so she was my secondary school PE teacher and also Steve Morritt was really influential um, and then when I came to Cardiff Met the obvious, the obvious one is Damien Jennings. Um, he's been so influential on me and my career even up until now so I have a lot of time and respect for Damien and I'm really thankful for, for him and, and uh, yeah, all the support he's offered me and I've learned so much from him so I'd say yeah, Damien mainly. I find it hard to kind of pinpoint a philosophy. Um, I think the biggest thing that I aim and aspire to do is to make sure I create an environment where all my players are enjoying themselves and having fun, and and you know they want to they want to keep coming back. Um, I think you know I've been really lucky in my basketball career to still be involved in a playing capacity, and that's what I want for the young females that I work with. You know they, they don't just have to finish playing after they finish university; they could really have a long, successful career ahead of them. And I think. What I try to encourage now um, in my environment, and I guess it could be part of my philosophy, is that players enjoy themselves and they love what they do. I think that's the main, the main thing for me. I think in the environment that I create, so I make sure that you know when we come together that we enjoy the environment, we enjoy each other's company, so I'll make sure that um, players will get to know each other individually, they don't just work with the same people all the time. I want them to enjoy the practice so you know the content of what I'm delivering has to be fun um, I don't believe in having training sessions that aren't enjoyable so I think that for me is key like the content of sessions um, and yeah I think building those relationships with individuals is what is what helps the, the, the collective environment if they can trust me trust each other 
um, know they have someone that cares, then that in itself, I think, is, is a great recipe for players knowing that you know, they're in an environment they want to be in. We were really lucky, for example, last year where we won every game, we were 10-0 in the league and I didn't need to give inspirational quotes or inspirational stories because the girls worked hard and they were having fun and they were enjoying it, but we were in a situation we were winning, so that was an easier situation. I think back to 2008-9, when before I went away and I was coaching the Division 2 team then, and we were bottom of the league, we hadn't won games, and we were, um, yeah, we'd come up every week we were losing, so it was a, quite a tough environment to be in. But I remember a, a particular time out, I think it was, and we were actually down by, I think it was down by one to top of the league, and I drew this infamous sideline play that we, we still run, <laughs> um, where it involved a back screen and a lob pass, and we actually had the opportunity to take this layup, which is a real high percentage uh, score, um, so we had the opportunity but we missed it and we actually lost by one. So we could have beaten top of the league based on that one um, out of time out of play uh, and we didn't but I, I think it just goes to show that it doesn't matter um, kind of, you know, if you're down, if you're losing, you know, we can be competitive and I think that's what I've always enjoyed with the, the teams I've worked with. Coaching is about people, it's about especially in our team sport, which I absolutely love. I'm not sure I'd be any good if I was working on my own as an individual athlete. Um, but yeah, for me, it's about people, building relationships, um, building lifelong friendships. I've been so lucky and the majority of my closest friends have all been teammates of mine. So for me, coaching is about, it really is about people. So I think for me, it gives me something that I love doing, that I really enjoy, it gives me purpose. Um, I think lockdown and Having our season cut short really showed me how much I love it being part of my, my daily routine and part of my schedule. Um, but yeah, it just gives me another a second family, like away from away from my own family and away from home that you know I'm committed to and I, I love being around. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Archers Arena. I'm Tom Guntrip and I'll be taking you through today's game. As you can see, London Lions sit top of the league 9-1 and one, and coming off the back of an impressive WBL Trophy final victory over the Nottingham Wildcats last weekend. Their first piece of silverware as a franchise. See Cardiff Met Archers sitting in 7th place on 4-7, and seven, just inside the playoff places after another impressive victory for them against Durham Palatinates on Wednesday evening. Short-handed, making a long trip on a Wednesday and they bring home the victory. And I'll just take you through the starting lineups for today's game. Starting off for the London Lions, number three, Shanice Beckford-Norton, number 10, Cassie Breen, number 12, Valentina Clocker, number 14, Kennedy Leonard, number 22, Paige Robinson. And then the starting lineup for the home Cardiff Met Archers. Number five and captain, Robin Lewis, number eight, Sarah Jorgensen, number 13, Kim Kien, Number 20, Shannon Hatch, and number 33, Marley Ball. London Lions, they've, they've had an impressive turnaround over the, uh, over the off-season last season. They, uh, they hadn't won a game when the COVID-19 pandemic ended the season, finishing at Norton 16. And now this year, they start the season off on a scorching streak, only losing to the Seven Oaks Suns in, in one of the games of the season so far. They've signed a host of young GB talent, including Kennedy Leonard, who's... Uh, who's probably going to be the star of the show today. Uh, former GB under-20 international with one cap at the senior level, played in Germany. And, uh, and she uh, she's, leads the league in assists, averaging nearly 10 a game. Cassie Breen is one of the best shooters, I think, in the league, uh, probably ever. Uh, she takes 7.73s a game and makes nearly 50% of them. Once she gets her feet set and she lets it fly, it's very difficult to stop her. Uh, but they're not just a, a threat there. The younger Shanice Beckford Norton's one of the most athletic players in the game. And, uh, and they play a really fast, up-tempo style. They like to run it in transition. They really put pressure on. 
And for not just to have a, a chance at winning today, they're going to have to slow them down in transition first and foremost. Uh, the Archers come into the game with, a, with an impressive victory on uh, Wednesday night against Durham, missing uh, Marco Zotti and Big Eacher due to injury and Sarah Jorgensen due to academic commitments. Uh, they beat bottom of the league, Durham, uh, after a very long road trip and in a one-point game and there was some real standard performance, including probably Kim Kian's best performance at the WBBL level. I think this season she's starting to come into her own. She's becoming a little bit of a, a defensive weapon, leading the team in steals and, uh, and her three-point shooting is always a, always a threat. Christina Begicha returns today, and it's likely that she'll play some part. The Archers forward is, a, is quite a dynamic player. Uh, she, she's got the size of a four and the speed of a three, so she's a matchup problem regardless of who's trying to defend her. And uh, I think we'll see her in a lot of pick-and-pop actions today. She'll, she'll get the ball and she'll look to drive past her defender, get into the paint and cause some havoc. And, uh, and with Shannon Hatch returning as well after a layoff from injury, so it's a nice pair of combo forwards that can really stretch the floor for the Archers. Marley Ball signed in the off-season from uh, the University of Calgary, where, uh, where former Archers coach Damien Jennings is, uh, is from. Uh, and uh, she's, uh, she's really sh impressed with her scoring. She, she can score from a variety of places, whether it's from the three-point range, whether she can drive inside for a, a range of creative finishes. Uh, she's become probably the number one scoring threat for the Archers this season, and especially with Marcus Otti out, they'll be, looking to, uh, they'll be looking to her for the bulk of the points early on. So along in, elsewhere in the supporting cast, the Lions have got a, a whole host of young British talent that have come through the, the pathway there and with Barking Abbey and, and a, a host of under-16 GB players, under-18 GB players. And, uh, after, after a couple of lean years, they've, uh, they've brought in some additional talent and it's really showing, and I think it's, it's great experience for those young players to play alongside top-class professionals like Leonard, like Breen, like Stephanie Ume. From, uh, from Cornell University in the States uh, and they'll see the benefit of that. Barking may not have won as many trophies as they'd liked over recent years but they have produced a number of international players and they have quite a few players over in the States currently and I think that from a, from a programme point of view they can be quite pleased with that and that's something that the Archers are looking to replicate and we'll see in the Archers squad today three young players in Izzy Bunyan, Maisie Harry and Karis Roy. Izzy Bunyan's playing uh, quite a considerable role in the WBL team and as well for D1. Uh, Maisie Harry and Karis Roy playing plenty in D1 and getting some valuable experience up in the WBBL. And as we can see, the starters are about to make their way onto the floor. The Archers are number five, Robin Lewis. Number eight, Sarah Jorgensen. Number 13, Kim Kien. Number 20, Shannon Hatch. Number 33, Marley Ball. The Lions just fist bumping with the referees. We've got number three, Shanice Beckford Norton. Number 10, Cassie Breen. Number 12, Valentina Clocker. Number 14, Kennedy Leonard. And number 22, Paige Robinson. Before play starts, both teams will make a statement uh, den denouncing racism. Shannon Hatch for the Archers and 22 Page Robinson for the Lions will tip off. And the Lions come up with the ball. Beckford Norton throws a cross court pass to Breen. Fires up the three and it's good for the first points of the game. Cassie Breen, the sharp shooter, gets herself going quite quickly there. Lewis with the ball for the Archers under pressure. Fires over to Hatch. Dribble hand off to Kent. Beckford Norton gets her hand on it. As uh, Kim was trying to prevent the backcourt, but it'll still be Archers' ball. Hatch will inbound. It's eight seconds left on the shot clock. Lewis with the ball. Stopped by Leonard. It's the cutting Hatch. Pulls up. Misses the jumper, and Robinson skies up for the rebound. Leonard pushing down the floor. Hard hedge by Hatch. She finds Clocker in the corner. Clocker takes on ball, fires it across to Breen. Breen to Beckford Norton. 
But for Norton, fires the three up in Jorgensen's face, and it's good, and it's an early 6-0 lead for the Lions. Comes Lewis down the right side. Pick and roll the ball. It's ball in the post. Fires it up with the defender all over, and it's good for two. First points of the game for the Archers. Leonard throwing the lob over to Beckford Norton after the back pick. Couldn't get up for the layup. A good resets back out. And Lewis picks up the foul. It'll be her first of the game. Lions end line. As ever during these further games, the ball replaced and sanitized wherever possible. And Leonard will inbound for the Lions. Finds Breen on the curl. Finds jump shot for two is good. The Lions take an 8-2 lead. Lewis straight down the middle of the floor. Finds ball, hand off with Lewis. Lewis back to ball. Ball pulls up for two. And it's good. Brings the Archers back to four, eight. Jorgensen applying the full court pressure. We'll wait to see whether she's forced the turnover or not. This is the style of the Archers play. They will look to get forward wherever possible defensively and try and put some full court pressure on. And she has forced the turnover and it's going to be Archers ball. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Lewis inbounds to Jorgensen. Give and go, Marley ball. Back across the ball for the three. No good. And Robinson rebounds under pressure. Hands off to Leonard. The give and go and off the lines go. Maybe Leonard comes off the ball screen. The archers looking to hard head, trying to force the ball out of her hands. Attempted pass to Robinson. Doesn't make it. Beckford Norton goes past Jorgensen. Skies in for the layup. It's 10 4 Lions. Robinson hits Kien. Looks to drive past Breen. Pass out to Hatch, tipped away by Beckford Norton, but the ball will stay with the Archers. Lewis with the ball. He's going to pick and roll with ball. Hatch gets it, fires up the three, and it's good. And there's the first three of the game for the Archers. Breen brings it over the halfway line. Loves the ball over the top to Robinson. Robinson puts in the layup. It's 12-7 to the visitors. Lewis reverses to Hatch. Hatch the ball. Lewis drives baseline on Leonard. Bump Beckford Norton again there on the helpline. Tips the ball out of bounds and the ball will stay with the Archers. Nine seconds on the shot clock to inbound for the Archers. Wilson dribbles out, hits Kian at the top. Shot clock running down. Ball with the fake, fires up the three. No good, it's the rim, that's out, and Breen collects the rebound. Fires off to Leonard. Lewis looking to apply pressure, see if she can pick up a steal or force the ball out of Leonard's hands. Hands off to Breen. Green circles round, hands off to Norton. Another hand off to Leonard with the follow, pick and roll by Robinson. Has a cross, clocker, no good with the shot. Hatch with the rebound, and Archers have the ball. Lewis looking inside, Jorgensen attempts the rip and go. Clocker just tips the ball out, and it's going to be Archers' ball. First subs of the game, Laura Shanahan will come in for Kim Kian. Shanahan, the long-time Archers and Wales player, checking into the game for the first time. She has the ball on the wing, pick and roll with Hatch, rejects the screen, throws at the floater, no good. Then with the pressure, she gets the rebound and off she comes the other way. Leading the league in assists, she'll be looking to throw some, uh, some passes inside today. Flips up the off-foot layup, We've seen that in the trophy final in the previous game between these two sides. The wrong foot, fires it up off the backboard and in, and Lions lead 14-7. to 
Shanahan with the ball, runs the pick and roll with ball. Hatch has it. Jorgensen drives past Robinson, finds Lewis in the short corner. And short corner shot is good for Lewis. A nice little 18 footer off the pass from Jorgensen. Here comes Leonard. Have some contact on the screen there. Clocker with the ball. First year Austrian forward. Beckford Norton taking on Lewis. Lewis on the contain. Green shot blocked by Shanahan. Not many three point shots blocked in the WL, and it's a great effort to get out there and block it. And it looks like Clocker may have fouled on the attempted rebound, and it will be Archer's ball. Hatch checking out, and Levi Warren, the longest tenured Archer player on the squad, she's checking in for the first time today. Lions applying a 2-1-2 full court press by the looks of it, but Jorgensen and Lewis break through. In the middle, Lewis to Warren. Warren fires up the two. Bounces out. Clocker with the rebound, but she's, as she pivots around, she steps on the end line, and it's going to be an Archer's ball. Shanahan will inbound for the Archers. Set. Shanahan out to the top. Ball has it. Looking for Jorgensen inside. Tries to drive past Leonard. Gets past Leonard, fires it up. No good. Jorgensen with the offensive rebound, but didn't hit the rim. The shot clock hasn't reset. And there's going to be a shot clock violation. Arch is just running out of time there as Warren looked to go up. Leonard with the ball. Takes it to the right side of the floor. Breen looking to come off the triple screen. Shannon collides with Beckford Norton. Beckford Norton has it up top. Breen gets it in the corner, fires up the three, no good. Rebounded by the Archers and Shanahan brings it away. Pass across to Jorgensen. Ball, Lewis. Archers looking to run their continuity pick and roll here. Shanahan fires up the three and it's good. Shanahan hits the three and it's Lions 14, Archers 12. It looks like the first sub for the Lions will be coming in soon. They look to run their back screen play. Clocker has the ball up top. Beckford Norton on the wing. Rejects the pick and roll. Takes it strong. Finishes over Warren. And they extend their lead to four. Jorgensen looking to take it straight back at Beckford Norton. He's across Warren on the screen. Pick the ball up, nowhere to go, no one making themselves available. And on the back up, Beckford Norton gets the steal. Has to go out to hand in there by Lewis and Jorgensen, and Ball brings it away. Ball hits Shanahan. It looks like Kennedy Leonard comes across with the block. The ball didn't go out of play. Robinson picks up the rebound, and suddenly lines are coming the other way, three on three. Fires across the Breed, feet set, fires it up. No good, but fouled on the three-point attempt. And it's going to be three free throws for Cassie Breen. Stephanie Ume checks in for the first time today. Valentina Clocker heading out. Breen so far a 94% free throw shooter on the year. She'll be looking to make all three of these. First one is good. Breen steps up for the second one and swishes it. Breen makes all three, and it's a seven point game in favor of the Lions. Bringing their full court trap quite far up the court here. Lewis looking to fire it over the top and find Jorgensen over her head, out of bounds, and it's going to be a Lions ball. Leonard has it. The heavy pressure from Lewis. Green curls off the screen. Beckford Norton pops out top looking for it. Then Cassie Brin coming off another set of screens. Robinson with the ball out on the wing. Tries to drive past Warren. Good. Comes up with a pick and roll with Leonard. 
was there. Leonard steps back for three and nails it. Tough shot from Kennedy Leonard. Some great defense from Robin Lewis, but sometimes better offense. Warren with the ball out top, fires across to Shanahan on the wing. Slips the screen, pops, fires across. Leonard sees the pass, picks it off, gets the steal, throws it the other way. Ume take, gets the layup, and it looks like it's going to be an Archer's timeout. Lions extend their lead to 10, to 12. And coach Steph Collins decides that's enough. Bring them in. Look to see if they can make a couple of changes. You see Breen running off multiple screens. If you're trying to guard the best shooter in the league, you have to be aware of where she is at all times. She's a great distraction action. You've got to make sure that you know where she is coming off those off-ball screens. It opens it up for, for slips from the, uh, from the players setting the screens. Coach Mark Clark of the London Lions has been involved in, in British basketball for, for quite a long time. His, his son, Dan Clark, one of the most capped GB players of all time. And Ella Clark, player for the Leicester Riders and also for the Loughborough Lightning, if it is in the Netball Super League, former performance director at, at GB. There's not much that he hasn't seen in basketball, and, and Coach Steph Collins is is another incredibly experienced player in British basketball. 152 caps for GB, involved at a director level in basketball Wales. And what these two combined don't know about basketball might not be worth knowing. Looks like Bunyan's checked in for the first time for the Archers. And Kuzmanovic checking in for the first time for the Lions. Bunyan with the ball. Lions full court pressing full action. Archers have cramped the floor slightly to get it over the timeline. Warren has it. Gets it back to Jorgensen. Moves it into the pick and roll. Finds Warren. Warren with the jump stop. Looks for the pass across to Bunyan. Bunyan drives past. Looks like another block for Leonard. And she eventually comes up with the rebound. Fires the pass at the top to Kuzmanovic. Looks for Breen in the corner. Doesn't quite get there. Goes across. Leonard back to Breen. Three's no good and Bunyan collects the rebound. You have to be incredibly careful helping off Cassie Breen, especially from the strong side corner. You know, Dilly don't want her to catch it at all, let alone have space to get up a three. Shanahan looks away inside. A great wraparound pass to Hatch and Hatch tucks it in. That's a fantastic pass by Shanahan. Wrapping it around the defender and uh, back to a 10-point game. 24-14 to the Lions. Kuzmanovic on the right wing. So Robinson in deep post position. Turns around, left hook over the shoulder, no good. Needs to pluck the rebound up from over the top. Shanahan Warren falls on it. It's going to be a jump ball. Two subs coming in for the Archers. Robin Lewis is checking back in. And Maisie Harry checking in for the first time today. A young Welsh prospect. Welsh captain at her age group. Played at FIBA. The two young Welsh stars on the court currently for the Archers. Lions taking off their full court press. And Lewis comes down the left side of the floor. Flows straight into it with Hatch. Warren looks for Hatch inside. High low pass. Really nice pass by Warren. Easy catch and turn for Hatch. She fires up the layup and it's good. Eight point game. Less than a minute to play in this first quarter. Kuzmanovic up top. Pressured by Harry. Back screen action for Robinson. Gets over the top. She manages to get hold of it. Another lofted pass. Leonard has it. Screen and roll with Ume. Fires it out to Robinson for the three in the corner. Hits nothing and Bunyan collects the rebound and the archers looking to run. Lewis pushing the pace. Finds Harry in the corner. Fires up the three. Oh good, Warren with the rebound. Straight back out to Harry. Leonard picks it off. So she's going to go the other way looking for two. Lewis comes across trying to put some pressure on but Leonard finishes under pressure. And the lead is back to ten. Shot clock off. 15 seconds left in the quarter. Archer's going to be looking to take the last shot here. Bunyan finds himself under pressure. And Lions get a steal. Breen keeps it in. Long pass by Robinson finds Umo. She makes the layup. Lewis has the ball. And the Lions go into the first quarter break with a 12-point lead. It's probably a sloppy sequence there for the Archers. I don't think they'll be particularly happy with that. When the Lions are playing such a full sort of full court pressure and putting individual pressure on with the ball, you can't afford to pick it up and, uh, and stop your dribble. You've got to try and keep yourself alive, keep yourself in a strong position, make sure that any passes you can fire, you can. 
They put themselves on the back foot there. At the end of the first quarter, Shannon Hatch leads the Archers in scoring with seven points. Cassie Breen has eight for the Lions and Beckford Norton has seven. The Archers aren't one of the most consistently prolific three-point shooting teams, uh, but they've had a good start here, two of five, making 40% of their threes. I think they should look to, to keep shooting the threes. They need to, uh, they need to try and some points back a little bit quickly here. You, while 12 points is, is not massive, uh, you've got to make sure that you try and throw the first punch coming out of this first quarter timeout. And they've got a strong unit coming back out. They've gone for their starting lineup. So Kian is back in. Ball is back in. And they'll, they'll be looking to make sure that the next run is by them. Lions coming back onto the floor. Nicole Lavinier checking in for the first time today. Another young British prospect. GB under 16s in the cancelled summer of 2020. Another product from New and Young Bloods. This is the ball up top. Uh, then that's going to be a backcourt violation, and the archers will have it. There's an early sub here. Jorgensen checking out after five seconds and Harry checking back in. Jorgensen not in any foul trouble. I don't know if they just try and get her a little bit of rest here. Harry with the ball on the wing. Finds ball. Action by Kim for ball. Pops up top for the three. Wide open, no good. Harry flies in for the rebound. This is the putback under heavy pressure and Leonard has the ball for the Lions. Fires it across to Breen. Breen guarded by Kien. Ball looking to deny Ume in the post. Leonard with the ball up top. Hand off with Breen. Curls past Kien. Was at the layup. Banks it off the backboard and it's in. 30 points up for the Lions. Hatch fires across to Harry. Fires look to switch. Hatch pops out to the short corner. It's a good spot for her. Just a little bit long, and Leonard has the ball under heavy pressure from Lewis. Lewis making Leonard work hard, bringing the ball up. High pick and roll, another hedge. Trying to force the ball out of Leonard's hands, making sure she can't turn the corner. Lavinia faces up, steps back in the short corner, and hits the shot in Hatch's face. And the Lions have doubled up the archers early here. It's 32-16 to the visitors. Ball finds Hatch, uh, stolen by Breen, saw the play coming, picks it off and they go the other way. Leonard looking for the pass. The pass finds Kuzmanovic, Kuzmanovic pitches to Breen, Breen turns the corner, spins. Leonard fires up the deep three, comes it over the top. A little bit of volleyball going on there, but Harry the last one to tap it out and it's going to be Lions ball. We've got subs both sides. Karis Roy checking in for the first time today. And Welsh forward plays mostly in the D1 team. And Beckford Norton comes back in for the visitors. She pops out, receives the ball on the wing. Passes to Kuzmanovic. Green comes off this elevator screen to the corner. It's a take on Kian, but Kian right in her face trying to prevent the three. Lavinia with the dribble. Oh good, Harry collects the rebound, heavy pressure from Kuzmanovic. Good pass, it looks like Ume misses the easy bunny. Ball comes away, is fouled on the pass. A scrappy sequence there for the Archers, but it's like Lavinia commits the foul, and it's going to be Archers' ball. Ball to inbound for the Archers. Lewis has it. Guarded by Beckford Norton. Hands off to Kien. Passes across the ball. Harry cuts back door. Ball goes past. Bumped by Ume. Looks like the foul's going to be called on the floor. And it's going to be end line for the Archers.
Again to inbound the ball. Finds Harry under the hoop, steps past. Steps past Kuzmanovic and does him the lovely layup. Nice footwork from Maisie Harry there. Now just 18, lines 32. Beckford Norton brings it over the timeline. Brings it over to Kuzmanovic. Looks across for Ume, finds it inside. Ume with the off foot finish. Close in off the backboard, nice and controlled. That's going to be Lions 34, Archers 18. Lewis hits ball on the pop. Three goes up, no good. Rebounded by Beckford Norton. Passed ball. In between the two defenders, finds Ume, steps past Harry. Boy goes to the block. And it's going to be two free throws. Subs back in for the Archers. Harry and Kian off. We've got Laura Shanahan and Sari Jorgensen checking back into the game. For the Lions, Cassie Breen comes out of the game and Austrian Valentina Klocker comes back in. Ume at the line. And she makes her first 70% free throw shooter on the year. First one was good, and the second one even better, and it's 36, Lions, Archers 18. Archers need a good set of offences here. Lewis Burns past the full court press. Finds Shanahan in the corner, foot on the line. Two-pointer for Laura Shanahan as Archers 20, Lions 36. Smanovic brings the ball up, guarded closely by Jorgensen. Lavinia up top, over to Beckford Norton. Beckford Norton trying to take on Lewis. Smanovic goes past Shanahan. Layup is missed. Ume tries to tip it to herself. Jorgensen comes up with a rebound. Goes ahead to Shanahan. Drives across the timeline. Finds Jorgensen in the corner. Back up to Shanahan up top. Jorgensen goes past. Lavinia is fouled on the floater attempt. She's going to head to the line for two. Jorgensen averaging nearly eight points per game for the season. And the first one is missed. Jorgensen an 87.5% free throw shooter for the year. Second one, nothing but net. Archers 21, Lions 36. Kuzmanovic brings the ball across the timeline. After Ume. Double screen set for Klocker. Klocker pops out for three. A little bit long. Beckford Norton skies in for the rebound. Incredible athleticism. It looks like she's fouled as she tries to escape the traffic. So Karis Roy is going to pick up the foul and it's going to be a Lions end line. Beckford Norton, one of the one of the springiest, one of the best jumpers in the WBBL. She's got the potential to get up and get rebounds that she would ordinarily have no right to get. She takes on Lewis off the inbound. Leans back, no good off the backboard. Roy gets the rebound, hands off to Shanahan, and Shanahan brings it across the halfway line for the archers. Roy with the step up screen. Shanahan pissed off against Lavinia, goes past, hits Jorgensen on the wing. And the three-pointer is good for Jorgensen. Archers 24, Lions 36. And that's going to be a timeout for the London Lions. Coach Clark not happy with what he's seen there. A nice pin-down screen for Robin Lewis. Freed Jorgensen up on the wing. And Jorgensen made no mistake, drained the three. And it's a 12-point game. Jorgensen struggling slightly from three this year. Only shooting 21%. The last two seasons at Archers, she's, she's been a lot better than that. And she'll be looking to, to turn things around today. And that's a great start. <laughs> Archers keeping it, keeping it just about close enough here. They're always primed to make a run. If you're within that sort of 10 to 15 point range, you're not happy, but you're not overly worried especially with the advent of the three ball and there's still 25 minutes left in the game. 12 points isn't massively. They've just got to make sure when they come out this timeout, 
but they don't let the Lions throw the next punch. The Lions will be looking to make sure that they take a, a more commanding lead into half time. And, uh, and they'll be wanting to make sure that they come out and, and hit some shots in a hurry and really put the pressure back onto the archers. It's like Izzy Bunyan and Levi Warren have checked back in for the archers. It's going to be Lions ball. Archers lining up full court here. We're going to look to speed Barking Abbey. So London Lions up a little bit here, try and force some turnovers uh, and see if they can get going the other way. Beckford Norton brings it across the halfway line, guarded by Jorgensen. So take Jorgensen on 1v1, but she can't get past her. Has to pick the ball up, fires it faster. Ume, no catch. Lavinia gets it, fires it back to Beckford Norton. And that's an and one basket good for Beckford Norton. Jorgensen called for the blocking foul, just not able to get in front there, a little bit too side on, and the way the rules are, that the advantage goes to the attacker there. It's almost really nice defence, but Beckford Norton goes to the line with a chance to make it a three-point play. She misses the free throw, but it looks like someone entered early, and we're going to have a retake. So Beckford Norton, again, an 80% free throw shooter on the year. And that one's missed. It looked like some of the Lavinia may have gone in early again. The ball can't get hold of the rebound. The archer's not happy with that. But it's going to be a London Lions ball because Manovic to inbound. And Clocker popping out. Steps in for the two. No good. Warren gets the rebound. Tipped straight out of her hands by Ume. Back out to Lavinia. Put up a ball. Clocker across to Kuzmanovic. Tries to drive past Shanahan. Shanahan keeping up. Ume goes past Bunyan. But it's going to be a travel. It looks like she may have gone on the same foot twice in a row. If you hop in basketball, it's going to be a travel. It looks like Hatch is checking back in. She's checking back in for ball for the Archers. Bunyan inbounds to Jorgensen. Here come the Archers, down 14, nearly halfway through this second quarter. This WBL clash between the Lions and the Archers. Warren. Hit on the back door by Jorgensen, under pressure, no good on the layup, and the Lions come the other way. Kuzmanovic backs it out up top. Shanahan gets past the Ume screen. Kuzmanovic goes off the backboard, nice and high, drops it in. And it's a nice finish for the youngster. Jorgensen brings it across to the archers, hits Bunyan. Bunyan looks to drive past Bet for Norton. Finds Warren. Warren hits Shanahan on the, on the back door pass. Shanahan out to Bunyan, catch and shoot three. Just a bit long. This rebounded by Ume. And here come the Lions. Kuzmanovic across to the left wing. It's Beckford Norton popping out top. Straight into pick and roll with Ume. Steps back. Misses the two. Bunyan collects the rebound. Foul is called. Looks like on Ume and it's going to head the other way. Beckford Norton not happy to not get a foul call there on the landing. And the referee's saying the landing's got to be straight down as well. Subs into the game for the Lions. Kennedy Leonard checks in, as does Paige Robinson, and Robin Lewis checks back in for the Archers. Shanahan comes out. Yeah, and Jorgensen has the ball for the Archers, 24-14. 14, apologies. He goes off the pick and roll, looks for Hatch inside, gets it to Hatch. Hatch collects herself, can't finish the short shot. And Robinson gets the ball, hands it off to Leonard. Comes Leonard off the pick and roll with Robinson, fires across to Beckford Norton on the weak side. Beckford Norton puts up the three, no good. A bit long. Ume rips the rebound out of the sky, turns around, puts in the two. And it's going to be 42 24 to the Lions. Lewis, guarded by Kuzmanovic. How's that? Hatch up top. Lewis up top. Has to take on Ume. A good shot clock winding down. Hatch fires it up. That's good. Composed finish there from Shannon Hatch. Shot clock winding down. Didn't rush. Fired over the shorter Beckford Norton. 
comes Kuzmanovic. Fires up the three. It's no good. Robinson over the back of Warren gets the ball, fires it out to Leonard. Little pick and roll, hard hedge by Warren. Kenny Leonard looks for Robinson on the roll. No good. And Cassie Breen's going to check back in for the Lions. Kim Ken's going to check back in for the Archers. Leonard leading the league in assists, a fraction under 10 per game. Well, that's a turnover. You can see why when she throws passes like that. If it comes off, it's going to be a guaranteed score. Kian up top. It's the Lewis coming off the pin down. That spins around, pick and roll. Finds Warren on the pot. Warren fires up the three. No good. Kian across with the offensive rebound. Back to Lewis. Lewis flips it up. Foul is going to be on the floor. It looks like it's going to be on Leonard. Leonard just getting caught with a hand in the cookie jar there. Nope. They've given it on 31, Stephanie Ume. Referee's just going to get together, make sure that they've got it right. Team fouls. It's going to be two shots for Lewis, even though she was fouled on the floor. Looks like they may have just pinged Ume for the move before the Leonard reach in. Robin Lewis for the line for two shots. And the first one missed by Lewis just runs out to the left. Last shot here for Lewis, 2.44 left in the second quarter. And it's good, 27-42. Lewis picking up Leonard full court. Robinson ready to hit with the screen. Lewis putting Leonard under pressure. Finds Bedford Norton on the wing. Off balance. Just about gets it back to Leonard. Looking for the back screen again. Leonard not happy with the call, with no call there. Looks through, may slips through her hand. She still comes up with the ball. Beats Bunyan to it, tries to turn around. Gets the shot off in time, but Kian comes up with the rebound. Bunyan has the ball in the corner, gets it to Warren. Warren turns, fires it back to Bunyan. Bunyan puts up the corner three, no good. Hatch comes up with the rebound, fires it back up to Kian. Kian drives inside, looks at the pocket pass, straight into the legs of Leonard. No good. And Leonard has the ball, fires it to Breen. Breen drives baseline, no pass. Looks for Leonard on the cut. Beckford Norton slices past, finds Ume. Ume drives inside. Hits the hanging jump shot and the basket's good. Plus the foul. Warren just clipping Ume there on the shot. Again, another opportunity for a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Sub coming in for the Archers. Hatch is coming out and Marley Ball is checking back into the game. There's going to be a line sub on the shooter. Ume leads the league in field goal percentage, shooting a scorching 62%. Reliable finisher inside. She checks out. Valentina Clocker checks back in. A key 100 seconds or so here. If the Archers can just make a little bit of a dent, they're down 18. If they can get that back to around the 12 point mark, they'll be feeling a lot better. The Lions will be looking to make sure this is at least 20 heading into the half-time interval. Lewis with the ball out top, taking on Clocker, gets past Clocker, slices down the lane, can't get the right-hand layup to go. Ball attempts the rebound, but Breen comes up with it. She's going to take it herself. Uh, she finds Leonard. Here's the Lions play call, the ball in hands, reject the screen. Turns around, probing, finds Robinson inside. She misses the easy layup. And it's still going to be their ball. Bunyan just gets a hand on it, tips it away from Robinson. Frustrated with her efforts there. But she's gone to good position. And she'll probably be making those more often than not. Leonard's going to be inbounding the ball for the Lions. Breen in the corner. Back. It's Robinson in the block. Oh, Breen to Leonard. Fires across to Beckford Norton. Beckford Norton fires up the three. Oh, good. Robinson collects the rebound. Goes back out. One of her teammates stood up on the bench and it looks like it may have been a slight bit of confusion there. I think she was looking for Breen. A bit of swarm almost fired it to Ume there. 
Lewis. Former Scottish international. Finds ball. Ball looks to go past. It's going to be it's like a blocking foul on Robinson. Just a little bit late. And a beat ball to the spot. And ball will have two shots at the line. 71% free throw shooter for the year. First one is pure. And the second one bounces out. Robinson with the rebound finds Leonard. This will be a foul on Ball. And it looks like there's going to be team fouls for the Lions. Time out for the Lions. They're going to be shooting. It's 28.45. We've got 45.8 seconds left here in the first half of the Archers Arena. This WBL Championship match between the Cardiff Met Archers and London Lions brought to you live by Cardiff Met Sport TV. The Lions are outscoring their uh, their usual. They're, they're outstripping their usual scoring pace. The Archers are, are just about in line with it. And, uh, I said earlier, probably a key 45 seconds here. And if the Archers can just build a tiny bit of momentum, if they can head back into the locker room, just feeling a little bit better about themselves, gives them something to work from at the start of the second half. Lions are probably likely to apply some heavy full court pressure here after their free throws. They're going to look to put the Archers under some pressure. I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see a, a double team or a trap somewhere really high in the front court, so in the back court, and then they're going to look to put up, you know, a quick six points or so here. And here come the archers. We've got Ball, Lewis, Kian, Bunyan, and Warren on the floor. And out come the Lions with Leonard, Breen, Clocker, Robinson and Beckford, Norton. Robinson at the line for two. Makes the first one. 64% free throw shooter for the year. Former GB under 20s player alongside Leonard. She makes them both. And Archers get the ball in, and here we can see full court trap attempt by the Lions. Breaks Kin, finds ball. She looks to drive inside, pulls up for the two, and it's good. And here come the Lions. They're going to push the tempo just for the rest of this half. Lewis slows them down. Leonard fires across to Robinson. Looking for the double screen for Breen. Breen gets it out top. Breen guarded by Lewis. And Bunyan fouls on the attempted catch, and that's going to be two free throws for Valentina Clocker. Again, after these free throws, I'd expect to see the Lions implement probably a similar full court press. Clark firing across some instructions to his players there. Breen steps in for the offensive rebound. And the second free throw from Clocker is good. And that puts Lions up 49-30. 20 seconds left in the half. Ball has the ball up top. And it's Kian on the wing. 13 seconds to go. Finds ball on the pop. Faced by Leonard. Ball attempts to go past Leonard. Finds Lewis. Lewis looks for Bunyan in the corner. Bunyan looks to drive past Breen. And Leonard. Put off by Clocker. Moving with the rebound. Can't get a shot up. Closely guarded by Warren. And that is half time here at Archers at Arena. Our host Cardiff Met Archers on 30 and the visiting London Lions on 49. Cassie Breen with 10 points, with Stephanie Ume with 13 at the half time break. Leading the scorers for the Archers, Shannon Hatch with 9 and Marley Ball with 7. Now it's not just basketball that Cardiff Met Sport TV stream and, and broadcast and, and produce features on. There's a host of other sports here at Cardiff Met, but 
One of the key ones here at Cardiff Met is netball. And it's been a tough 12 months for our Archer athletes, but Cardiff Met Netball Club have developed an amazing project to help support and motivate their players through these really difficult times. Club manager Kira Davis tells us about the club's Met Mindset initiative and how it hopes to build resilience and togetherness for their players. So this year we really wanted to make sure that we were looking after our players as people and I think during Covid that's been really important for us to make sure even when they're not training they know that we have a friendly coaching team, friendly senior players and they can come and talk to us about anything. So the Met Mindset project basically came from that idea but it's developed more into a research project now as well. So we have a PhD student, Jenny Ward, who's leading the project and she'll be doing a research project from that. And it's essentially just trying to create more resiliency in our players and understanding maybe what does affect their mindset with netball or also their mindset with university and with other pressures and how they deal with these pressures all in one. We wanted to do this for a while and I think this was the year to do it. Um, and the players are really excited to get started as well. Our players are really, really motivated, but they're motivated by competition and naturally they would be as they wanted to be in a Bucks team in the first place. We have lots of players that are part of MPL squads, part of Welsh national squads. So we needed to find a way to motivate from our first team all the way through our six teams and then through our social side of the club as well. So every step of the way we've been asking our committee uh, what they think of things. Our coaches, the majority ex-players themselves as well. And that puts us in really good stead because we know whether we would have enjoyed something. So we've tried to do kind of mini uh, engagement activities, competitions and trying to get them as active as possible but not feeling like they're forced to be active. But also there's little incentives from us as a club as well. And obviously as a team sport, we've been trying to create that team atmosphere as much as we can, even though people can't see each other. So we've still been doing sessions online, uh, the same times, the same days as we would usually train. So they almost still have that routine. It may look different, but hopefully it doesn't feel too different because it's still their teammates, their friends, their coaches. We're all still there together and we're all still going through this as one club. Especially in the sport of netball, there's never been enough coverage. And I think this year there were definitely massive milestones that we've met. I mean, the Super League having a deal with Sky Sports and it's every match is being televised, whether that's on the Sky Sports channel or on their YouTube, that's a massive step for us. By having those extra media coverage opportunities, it provides younger players to see who they could be or who inspires them. And, there's a massive thing with female role models that they have to be visible. There's all well and good having lots of role models, but if younger people can't see them and can't aspire to be like them, then we're not really doing our job. And I, I firmly believe that a lot of our players will go on to bigger and better things with netball and they will be female role models themselves. So even though they might be looking up to someone playing in the Super League now or playing internationally, they will be in those shoes in the next couple of years, hopefully. So we like to think as well as we're making good players, we're making good people. Really interesting piece there, Tom. How important do you think it is for athletes to stay motivated during times like this? Yeah, it's quite difficult when you don't know when your next game is going to be and athletes often go on, on periodisation and making sure that they're fine-tuned for the next game. When you don't know when your next is going to play, it can be quite difficult to try and stay in shape knowing or well, not knowing if it's going to be a month, three months, a year. Yeah. And, and we really found that, when we, especially when we were speaking to our freshers, they were finding it a little bit more difficult than maybe the more senior guys because their first experience of university and they've, they've, it's been a very different one to at least when I was a fresher. Yeah, definitely. Well, hopefully there's sport back soon for them. Um, but luckily we are here watching today's game. Who stood out for you in the first half? Yeah, and I mentioned Kennedy Leonard at the start of the game and she was the MVP in the trophy final. She's probably the MVP of the first half. You know, it, it felt like she had a, a quiet half and then I just checked the stat sheet. You know, she's got five assists, four steals, uh, three steals, a couple of blocks, which you normally wouldn't get. She had her hands all over the game. 
And like that, but she's sort of the, the emotional barometer of the team. Like she brings, she keeps her team under control. Mm -hmm. you know, she gets them over the halfway line. She gets them into the sets they want to run, and she can throw some passes that probably many other people in the league can't. Yeah, and uh, the Lions are leading now by 19 points. What will the Archers have to do differently in the second half? Uh, yeah, I mentioned start controlling the rebounds, and, and they were the, uh, there were plenty of offensive rebounds on display for the Lions. You know, they could go up and get it over the top of the shorter Archers players. They really got to work on when the box now. They've got to hit someone and really walk them back. They've got mm -hmm. to get a lot more physical in order to try and control the glass. If they can control the glass, they've got they've got a chance. Yeah, and what do you think Steph would have said to the team? Uh, it's not just about that. She's also got to make sure that they keep their heads a couple of times. It got a little bit dicey and the team weren't exactly 100% together. I think in the second half we'll see a lot better effort in terms of their mentality, making sure that they stay as one group, regardless of who's on the floor and who's not, to try and make sure that they can work together as a team to get it back in the game. Definitely. Well, fingers crossed that happens. The first half has finished now, but stay tuned for the second half. Quite happy with their performance at both ends. Stephanie Ume leads all scorers with 13, and Cassie Breen also has 10. For the archers, we've got Shannon Hatch with nine and Marley Ball with seven. But I think one of the standout performances, like we just mentioned, was Kennedy Leonard. And she only took four shots, but with seven rebounds. So apologies for that. Four rebounds, five assists, three steals, two blocks. She had her fingers in every pie and she was really, really putting a display on out there. So the archers will be looking to try and keep her a little bit quieter in the second half. For the Lions, they normally score about 84 points per game and they're, they're on course for nearly 100. And, and they're still not shooting quite at their usual standards from the three-point range, only three of 12, down from their usual 32%. But inside, they've been almost unstoppable. The shooting was scorching 60%. And it's not just Ume, Robinson, Leonard, Lavinia, 
Beckford Norton. They're all finishing strong at the rim and they're making it very difficult for the archers to, to stop, to really stop them putting the pressure on. And they're strong drivers, they're heading past them again straight to the rim. And when you can get to the rim against a, against a team, you can really force some, some bad rotations if you're putting a lot of pressure on. It's a lot harder to deal with from the inside out. In the keys for the archers in the second half, they're looking to make sure they just stay composed a couple of times. They got a little bit flustered by the full court press of the Lions. They dealt with it. They dealt with it reasonably well when Essex Rebels were here a couple of weeks back. It's a case of can they do the same thing today? Now they've, we've not seen Begicha today, and, uh, and she's a big miss. You know, she's been struggling with injury lately, and it looks like she may not be able to play. We're also missing Marcus Otti, who broke her nose in that Essex Rebels game. So they're lacking on a little bit of size, which is something that the Lions are really taking advantage of. In terms of some of the young stars on display, for the archers we're seeing players like Izzy Bunyan and Maisie Harry play key roles in that first half. Izzy Bunyan, you know, she, she missed her shots, but she took some pretty good shots and, and she moved the ball nicely. A couple of rebounds and uh, she drew a foul. Maisie Harry, one of three, including one of two from the two-point range. And again, she picked up a couple of rebounds, including an offensive rebound. And for some of the, these young players, they're, they're not going to be perfect. And the key is to expose them to situations where it is going to be a little bit more of a struggle for them. They both play D1 basketball along with Karis Roy, who also featured today. And for them, for them to play against some of the, the highest level basketball players in this country uh, one day and then be able to sort of challenge their skills the next is a great learning environment for them. The Lions have got plenty of young talent on their bench as well, and, in, and some young British talent in their starting lineup. Uh, players like Lavinia, Beckford Norton, Paige Robinson. Uh, they're, they're all young British stars who've, who've either represented their country recently or were going to in 2020. And like I mentioned earlier, Lions are a consistent pathway. Both men's and fe men's and women's basketball, they're a consistent pathway of producing international players. And the two main goals for any program are really to win trophies and produce good players. And they just won their first piece of silverware as the London Lions last weekend when they beat the Nottingham Wildcats. And they didn't have to get out of second gear in that game really after the injury to Joyner. Um, so they, they, they had followed that up with a great win in midweek and they'll be feeling really confident ahead of this second half. The Archers, they came in off a short-handed win, one-point win against Durham midweek missing Marco Zotti and Begicha due to injury and missing Jorgensen due to academic commitments. Durham is a really tough place to travel if only because it's such a long trip to go so regardless of fans or or not what there is like uh, to play that to play like that after you've had to sit on a minibus for, for that amount of time is quite an impressive display. Uh, it shows a lot of determination and they held on in, in crunch time and part of the Archers problem has been learning how to win these close games as we saw in the Rebels game here a couple of weeks ago, it was there for the taking. They've had a couple of other games that are quite close. And one of the stages for a team is to learn how to win. Lions last year didn't, didn't win a game before the pandemic ended the season. And now they've turned this corner. They've brought in some talent, but they also know how to win. They know how to dominate. They know how to not let up. And that's something that this Cardiff Met team is still yet to learn. But they have started to show signs of that on Wednesday. And they need to take that know-how to win and now turn that into know-how to come back from a deficit. 19 points sounds like a lot, but with 20 minutes to go, you don't have to get them all back at once. And I think that's what Coach Steph Collins will be saying to her team. She won't be saying we need 19 points back in the next five minutes. You just keep chipping away. In five minutes' time, you're going to want to see the scoreboard down to 13 or 14. And by the end of the quarter, if you're looking at 10 or even into single digits, then anything can happen over those last 10 minutes. The Lions lead the league in steals, and I think it showed again today with some of the pressure they're putting on seven in the first half, and they normally average nearly 14 a game. And when you turn the ball over in live ball situations like that, it makes it very easy to get out in transition. So I think we should be looking for them to do the same again here. Kennedy Leonard loves to pull the, push the ball in transition, loves to pass it ahead, loves to get her teammates involved. So Archers are going to start the second half. Hatch with the ball. 
It bounces to Lewis. And the second half has begun here at Archers Arena. Lewis finds ball. Hand off back to Lewis. Lewis takes on Beckford Norton. Can't get past her. We still implement the step through. No good. Bounces off the rim. Robinson with the rebound. Bounces off Lewis, but she collects it. Hands off to Beckford Norton and lines come the other way for their first offense of the half. Beckford Norton. Pass blocks a little bit by ball. Beckford Norton fires it across to Breen, but can get her hand on it. And it's going to be a line sideline with 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Leonard hits Robinson on the back gut. She gets fouled by Hatch. And she's going to head to the line for two. Robinson previously featured in the WBL back in the 2015-16 season for the Brixton Topcats. So she went to Juco with Midland College and then finished with two years at the University of Florida Gators where she graduated. She makes second and the Archers have the ball. Jorgensen on the wing, back to ball. Ball looks for Kien. Beckford Norton all over her. Hands in. She tries to find ball. The well, ball had come towards Kien and the ball flies out of play. And it's going to be Lyons possession. Robinson inbounds and Leonard has the ball. Kennedy Leonard with one GB senior cap. Plenty of experience with under 20s. The all time leader for assists at D1 University of Colorado. She passes to Robinson. Beckford Norton goes baseline, but Jorgensen's there. Beckford Norton finds clock on the cut. She can't collect the ball. Misses the layup. Hatch, Hatch finds it. Back to Marley Ball, and the Archers have it. Ball rejects, passes to Kien. Looks for Hatch in the short corner. Hatch faces up. Passes back out to Kien. Inside ball screen. Kien rejects the screen. Plays it to the middle. Puts the ball in, but it's going to be an offensive foul. Beckford Norton with the positioning. And there's no basket, and it's going to go the other way. Green to inbound. Leonard has it, guarded closely by Lewis. Sotar trying to protect it. Lewis putting plenty of pressure on. Breen has it up top. That's for Beckford Norton. Clocker comes up to set the screen for Leonard on their wheel. Fires it back to Clocker. Across to Beckford Norton. Fires up the three. Front rim. Rebound collected by Hatch. Jorgensen has it. Swings it left to Lewis. Lewis on the wing. He's inside. Hatch looking for inside position on Leonard. Ball with the ball up top. Across to Jorgensen. Shot clock into single figures. Robinson blocks Jorgensen. Lewis finds Kien for the three, and it's good. Great defensive play by Robinson, but it goes unrewarded as Kien knocks down the three, and it's Archers 33, Lions 50. Leonard hands off to bet for Norton, curls into the middle. Goes to the hang time, can't finish. Hatch goes the rebound under pressure, and gets it across to Lewis. Lewis forward to Kien, Hatch goes back door. No good, Ken finds ball up top. Across to Jorgensen in the corner for the three. Front rim, no good, rebound collected by Breen. Outlet immediately to Leonard. Leonard pushing the floor, surveying her options across to Robinson. Robinson into the pick and roll with Beckford Norton. Beckford Norton turns the corner. Again, straight up defense by Ball, rebound collected by Hatch. And here come the Archers. Breen gets a hand in on Kien, and there's a turnover with Leonard coming the other way. Kien okay, getting fast pace and a little bit scrappy here. Leonard checks the screen it inside to Robinson. Robinson at the free throw line, turns around for the jump shot. Leonard hits the deck, Lewis helps her up. Hatch gets another rebound, drives, and then is bumped by Clocker. And the Lions have called a timeout. Leonard and Coach Clark not happy with the officiating. Making their point known. 
So I've, ne I've never heard of an official overturning their call just because you complain loud enough. So they'll be looking for them to make sure they have a different call next time down the floor. It's been a low scoring second half so far. The Archers leading it 3 1. Though I think they'll be happier with their defense, especially making sure that they control the defensive glass. Hatch came up with plenty of rebounds. And we've seen, although they've not necessarily converted on all of their transition opportunities, they're at least creating some. And, and that's going to be important to make sure that you can overturn a 17 point deficit in 17 minutes. So the Archer start has come back out to the floor. And same for the Lions. So it's going to be Archer's ball to inbound in front of the Lions bench. And Jorgensen will inbound the ball to Lewis and we are back underway. Iverson cut across the top for Jorgensen. Just a burn past Leonard, finds Hatch up top, fires up the three and it is good. Shannon Hatch with her second three of the game. And Robinson steps over the line on the inbound. Some of the archers feel a little bit happier. It's going to be archers ball under the baseline. Hatch comes out for Warren. Hatch has only just returned from injury. She won't be able to play as many minutes as she might normally like. And we have uh, another start for London Lions. Stephanie Ume comes in for Valentina Clocker. Kim will inbound the ball for the Archers. It's Jorgensen out in the corner under pressure from Robinson. Kim with the ball. Green right in front of her. Jorgensen found inside. Goes off the backboard and in. The Archers bench enjoying themselves and it's a 12 point game. Leonard with the ball up top. Finds Uno. Beckford Norton straight down the middle. Breen on the curl, guarded closely by Warren. Steps past her. Is fouled. Referee's confirming blocking foul on one. It's going to be two shots for Breen. Breen three of three from the line so far today after an earlier three point foul. And the first one is good. Shot to come. Lions lead extended to 13. And Breen makes it a 14 point game. This has the ball, the Lions full court press in action. Ball sucks in two, finds Lewis. Lewis goes past the next line. Warren finds ball up top. Ball inside. Off balance, off the backboard. Beckford Norton with the rebound, finds Leonard. Uh, just into the middle of the floor. Hard screen by Robinson. Takes the pull up, misses. Ball with the tip over the top of Robinson. Ken gets it, finds Lewis, and here come the Archers. Hesitation from Lewis. Finds Warren, Warren across to Ken. Ken goes baseline, gives it up, misses. Jorgensen with the offensive rebound, finds Lewis. Lewis across the ball, it's short. Breen gets it, fires ahead to Leonard. Ball clips Leonard on the layup. The basket is good and the foul. Contact to the head signals the referee. Elena's going to go to the line for one. Shanahan back into the game for Kian. And at the line for one. Makes it. And it's a 17-point game. 5.20 left in the quarter. Ball, at, so the ball slips through Ball's hand. Stephanie Ume collects the steal, puts it in, and it's a 19 point game. The Organson with the ball up top, swings it to Ball. This is where the composure is going to be key for the Archers. You can't compound a run. Shanahan goes baseline against Breen, nowhere to go, picks up her dribble, stuck on the baseline, fires it back out to Ball. 
Ball cross over in front of Leonard, pulls up for the two. It's a little bit long. Robbins collects the rebound under pressure from Warren, hands off to Leonard. Leonard pitches ahead to Beckford Norton. Beckford Norton goes baseline. Strong left hand finish off the glass. And the lead is up to 21 for the Lions. Jumerson down the left wing. The biggest lead of the game for the Lions. Ball posting up against Leonard that goes baseline. And they're not happy with that one. They're clip on the arm and ball is going to go to the line for two. Ball at the line for two. First one is good. Actually, from Carleton University in Canada, not University of Calgary. She makes the second, and it's back to 19 for 19 point lead for the Lions. So here come the Lions. Kennedy Leonard guarded by Robin Lewis. A moving screen called. Paige Robinson not stationary as Lewis tries to get round. A little bit of a clip. And that's going to be a turnover. Archer's ball. Bunyan checks back in for Lewis. As you can hear, the Archer's bench providing plenty of encouragement to the players out on court. It's going to be a bit of a slog, but they're making sure that they're encouraging the best they can. Ball with the ball up top. Fakes the handoff. The Shanahan goes baseline. Jorgensen pops up at the elbow. Finds Bunyan in the corner. Bunyan goes past. Shot clock down to six. Five. Shanahan down the middle. Left hand layup. No good. Robinson collects the rebound. Leonard pitches ahead to Breen. Breen stops on a dime. Leonard. Fake and go. Pass Jorgensen. Great pass inside to Ume. Ume misses the reverse layup and Warren gets it. Hands off to Jorgensen. But that's a fantastic pass by Kennedy Leonard. A fine demonstration of why she's averaging 10 assists a game. Ball pops off the screen. And the three-pointer is good. The archers aren't going away here. Here come the Lions. Leonard rejects the screen. Pulls up for three and drains the revenge three. There's a foul called on the floor. Ball hit the deck. Lions look like you know, it's going the other way. I think that was called on Robinson. It's going to be Archer's ball on their own end line. Both teams about to be in team fouls, but not quite yet. In for the game for the Lions comes Kuzmanovic and Clocker. Out comes Robinson and Beckford Norton. Here come the Lions full court press. Better effort in the second half, breaking it so far for the Archers. Shanahan. Shanahan finds Bunyan. Bunyan brings it across the timeline, picks the ball up. Ball under pressure. And that's going to be a shot, uh, a backcourt violation. Under pressure for Mume on the catch, and her foot just stepped on the line. The Lions press working. So the ball's going to come in in the front court. It's going to be 14 seconds on the shot clock. Referee is just deliberating with the table. I'm just trying to eavesdrop in for everyone. Kennedy Leonard overseeing it all. Played in Germany last year at Herner, averaging 11.7 points per game, 3.5 rebounds and 3.3 assists in the German top flight, as well as EuroCup women action. Okay, there's going to be an official's time out. Looks like something needs looking at with the book and the stats. 
So a, a nice article recently, just before the cup final by Mark Woods over at MVP 24-7, where he has a chat with Kennedy Leonard and discusses uh, a little bit of the COVID pandemic and her journey to the UK. Uh, the mother emigrated from Scotland to the United States because she wanted to become an Olympic level swimmer. And uh, Leonard returned recently uh, after her four years at University of Colorado where she averaged 14.3 points per game and 5.8 assists for her career. And as we look at Mike Clark giving instructions to his side there. Mike Clark with plenty of experience in basketball. He knows what he wants and he knows what he wants his players to do. As we see, you see Coach Collins also in action. She's got her whiteboard out. She's going to make sure her team still believes they can do this. There's still 13 minutes and 15 seconds left to go. And yes, the, the deficit is 21. But as they can see, they can, they can put together a couple of possessions in a row. And it's just a matter of sticking together two, three, four runs in a row. It's not, it's not impossible at this situation. But they, uh, they're going to need to make sure that this deficit isn't too big going into the last quarter. As we see Leonard chilling on the all-girls basketball. Branding another great initiative by FIBA, Basketball England, WBL, to increase participation in basketball amongst young girls. Now the Archers have run plenty of clinics at the, at the London Lions. Shanice Beckford Norton's involved in coaching in the Junior Academy. And while we can't have fans in here at the moment, I think it's great to see there are plenty of role models for young future basketball players who are coming through the ranks and as we can see out on court we've got players like Isabel Bunyan who've come through the pathway and they're looking to try and make an impact at the next level. Looks like we're just about ready to get back underway here. Yep, whatever the issue was has been resolved and looks like Leonard's about to inbound the ball. Thank you for sticking with us. And here we go, Leonard to Kuzmanovic. Kuzmanovic finds Klocker. Standard elbow, passes to Breen, just behind Breen, she gets a fingertip on it, gets control back. Then it collects, it's Klocker, Klocker with the nice dump off pass. The bunny missed by Ume. And Archer has come the other way. Some nice ball movement there, an extra pass, gets the layup. It's a good process, the Archers. Shanahan has the ball on the right wing. Pass it to Ball up top. Ball takes the handoff. Clocker gets a hand in, gets the steal, and now Leonard's coming the other way. Ball to down the other end. Making her way back, it's five on four for the moment. And the drives, looking inside, it finds its way through to Ume, but she can't collect it. Ball comes up with a steal, and Bunyan comes the other way. Ball has it on the wing, looking for the handoff with Bunyan. Bunyan goes the other way, pulls up for the floater. Back iron, no good. Breen with the rebound ahead to Leonard. And the Lions play caller, chucks it ahead to Breen. Breen turns the corner. She draws the foul, looks at contact to the head. It's going to be two shots for Cassie Breen. The third year pro in her first year with the London Lions. We visit Central Michigan University and with Spa Gran Canaria in the Spanish second, Ice Vogel in the German DBBL before joining the Lions last summer. A couple of subs as Leonard comes out, but for Norton comes back in. Breen makes the first. Ken's back in the game. Green steps up to the line, bounce, 
makes the second. But the game continues. Sub, Breen subs out. And we've got Fatima Jana checking into the game for the first time. Lewis takes the press over to Bunyan. Bunyan takes it, finds Shanahan in the corner. Shanahan turns down the shot, looks to drive past Clocker. Looks at the layup, no good. Warren gets the rebound, hits Gian up top. Get across to Lewis. Lewis with the three, just off right. And that's a great start for Jana. She collects the rebound. Guzmanovic has the ball. Just across to the middle. Beckford Norton off the down screen, curls across. Just about gets her hands on it. Guarded by Kien. Drives right, past Kien, takes it strong, drops in the layup, it's good. And that is a 23 point lead for the London Lions. Lewis pushes the ball, not picked up in transition. It's Shanahan, just fumbled the pass. Archer's lost the advantage there. Bunyan, lost to Kien. It's an ice the ball screen. Kien flips up the floater, may have been a push. No good, Beckford Norton gets the ball, fires it long. It somehow finds its way to Clocker. Ume just steps out of bounds and it's going to be an archer's ball. Here comes Lewis for the archers. Pitches across to Bunyan. Bunyan receives the flare screen from Warren. Lewis drives past, finds Shanahan in the corner. Shanahan. Drives past Jana, the basket is good, count it and the foul. A little bit of contact as she went up for that shot. Coach Clark not happy with the play there of Jana and Shanahan is at the line. One shot. And it's good from Shanahan. And that brings the Archers within 20. Well, less than a minute left here in the third quarter. Kuzmanovic has the ball up top. Screen from Ume. Flips it back to Ume. Drives past Bunyan. It's a tough finish off the backboard, and it's good. A 22-point lead for the line. Shanahan has to go past Jani. Shanahan flips up the left. No good. Warren fights for the rebound. Beckford Norton comes up with it. The scramble looks like two hands on the ball, but looks like Shanahan is going to be called for that one. Yep, so that's going to be two shots for Shanice Beckford Norton. Shanahan just getting a little bit too strong trying to get the ball after that scramble. Here come the Lions with a chance to extend their lead. Shanice Beckford Norton at the line for two. She's naught of one today so far. And the first one just rolls out. The second one is good, and it's a 23 point lead for the Lions. Ken brings it across the halfway line. Finds Lewis. There's a four second difference between shot and game clock at the end of the third quarter here. Lewis under pressure from Kuzmanovic. Shot clock in single digits. Go, stops and goes past Kuzmanovic. Bunyan, also joined past Kuzmanovic, gets hit on the layup. No good, but she will get two free throws out of it. Foul called on Kuzmanovic. Bunyan to the line for two. This will be her first free throws of the game. The first one no good. Bunyan, who featured for GB under 16s in recent years. Makes the second. Kuzmanovic brings it across. Six seconds left in the quarter. King gets a hand in. Kuzmanovic pivots round, throws it up, hits the back of the rim. Ume gets the rebound but doesn't have enough time to put it up and in. And at the end of the third quarter, it is Cardiff Met Archers 47, London Lions 69. 
After a strong start to the quarter for the Archers, especially defensively, they ended up losing the quarter by four. Hatch and Ball both have 12 for the Archers. Well, there are four players in double digits for the Lions. Beckford Norton has 14, Breen has 14, Leonard has 13, and Ume has 17. Lions one of the few teams in the league with four players to average in double digits, and the same four players have continued their scoring form today. Combining for all but 11 of their team's points. Archers back out on the floor. There'll be Lewis, Shanahan, Kian, Hatch and Ball. With a 22-point deficit, the Archers are really going to have to make start making a dent in this lead in a hurry. They have to look to push the tempo. They're going to have to hit a few threes, you'd think. And, uh, and ultimately, they've got, they've got to make sure that as I say, you throw the first punch in this round. You get yourself on top early, get a little bit of momentum, and, uh, and stranger things have happened. And the Lions will be looking to make sure that they just control the game for the next few minutes, knock the stuffing out of the archers, and then they can just make sure that they can cruise to the victory. Who made it inbound for the Lions? Dismanovic, Beckford, Norton, Clocker and Jana all on the floor. The final quarter here at Archers Arena about to begin. And then under pressure, Kuzmanovic turns it over under heavy pressure. Hatch made the pass difficult and Kien made the reception difficult and the Archers are going to get the ball. Here comes Lewis down the left wing. That's with a strong screen. Clocker with the hard switch. Force Lewis back. Lewis to Shanahan. Shanahan goes past Jana. Recovers. Good help from Kuzmanovic stopping the drive. Lewis picks it up around the free throw line. Once Hatch. Hatch with the two. It's good. And there's the first chip. Here comes Kuzmanovic for the Lions. Lewis looking to get a hand in. Kuzmanovic guarded by Kian. And hit by the screen. Open lane. Hatch makes it difficult, but it's a great lefty finish by Kuzmanovic. Up and over the oncoming defender. Some great composure, and it's back to 22. Here comes Lewis across to Shanahan off the Iverson screens. The baseline from Shanahan. Step through. Looking for Lewis. Tipped. Lewis still gets it. Lewis stops. Stolen by Ume on the pass. Beckford Norton throws it ahead. Ball gets a hand on it. Like Clocker may have got a hand on it as well, but it's going to stay with the Lions. Archers may be down 22, but they're still showing a lot of fight here. And that'll be something that pleases Steph Collins. She's got to make sure her team doesn't give up regardless of the score. Beckford Norton. That was... With the push-off, it's a strong forearm straight to the chest of Lewis. And it's going to go the other way. It's going to be Archer's ball. Got to make sure when you're driving, you don't extend that arm to throw your defender off balance. Referee in perfect positioning to see that one. Shanahan checks out and Maisie Harry checks back into the game. Here comes Lewis. And Lewis dribbles over to the wing. Hatch comes up for the pick and roll. Whistling switch. Lewis turns the corner, finds Harry in the corner. She fires up the three. It is good. The Archer's teammates are buzzing, and it is down to 19. Here comes Beckford Norton back up to Kuzmanovic. Harry just about gets around the screen. Back out. Beckford Norton. And Clocker hits the three at the top. Answers straight back. Yet again, London Lions replying. In timely fashion, Lewis Paskusmanovic finds Ball on the dump off. An easy two for Ball. It's a great find by Lewis, drawing the defender on the help. And it's a 20 point game. Moving screen called on Clocker, just making sure that she got Harry. And the referee again in perfect position, right in line to see that. Here come. Multiple subs. Jorgensen back in for Lewis. Checking in for the first time for the Lions. We've got Anna Trett also checking back into the game. We've got Kennedy Leonard and Nicole Lavinia. Uh, 
and a tra another product of the Barking Abbey and London Lions pathway. Ball turns the corner on the fake handoff, right hand inside layup is good. The Archers still feel like they can do this. Here comes Leonard. Ume at the elbow, looking for Trett off the double screens. Trett fires across to Jammer in the corner. Jammer takes it strong. Hatch comes across on the help, gets a hand. Jorgensen picks up the loose ball, fires it across to Harry, guarded by Trett. Looking for Hatch, short corner, back out to ball, across to Jorgensen. Jorgensen goes past Lavinia, throws up the floater. A good tip, controlled tip, straight back to Hatch. Ball flies past the closeout of the backboard, and she's called for the foul on the rebound. Strong grab by Jana. Ball flying and chasing her own shot. And we've got a timeout for the London Lions. Coach Garrett sensing his team aren't doing quite enough to hold the Archers at bay. Archers still believing they can do this. Coach Mark Clark laying down the law with his side there. Not a long time out. Wants to make the point to some of his young players about their roles and responsibilities. It's going to be London Lions ball on their baseline. I was just picking up most of the way. And here comes Kennedy Leonard with Ume at the elbow. Let's go past Warren. Warren cuts her off once. She gets past and puts in the layup. A little bit too easy for Ume there. Jorgensen with the ball. King finds Warren. Warren looks across the skip pass to Harry. Harry goes past Leonard. Jorgensen with the pull up. No good. Rebounded by Jana. And here comes Leonard. Leonard, middle of the floor. Guarded by Jorgensen. Fakes the handoff, but Jorgensen reads it well. Stays with her. Lavinia puts up the three, guarded closely by Hatch. Front rim, rebounded by Kien. Goes it ahead to Hatch. Harry picks it up, finds Hatch in the short corner. Hatch goes middle, finds Kien. Looks like it's blocked by Leonard, but Kien finds the rebound. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Overly going down, Jorgensen with the ball. Throws it up. Looking to hit the rim. The so shot clock runs down, but nothing. Jorgensen and Hatch strongly believing that the ball was tipped, but the referees disagreeing. It's going to be Lions ball. Karis Roy checks back into the game. Okay, they've, they've consulted each other and they believe that it was tipped. So it's going to be Archer's ball on the end line, but without it hitting the rim, there's only one second left to get a shot off. It's got to be a quick catch and shoot. There's no time to dribble here. Let's see if they've got something in their locker for this. Blocked by Lavinia as King tries to get the shot off and this time for sure it is a shot clock violation. And here come the Lions, their bench buoyed by that. And it's Lavinia in the high post. Cross to Jana, Jana facing up, goes past again. A long extra second step there. Jorgensen almost wanders into trouble. She just shakes off Leonard. Lovely move by young Jana. A long second step, just getting her past her defender. Jorgensen into the middle of the floor. Foul called on the floor as Jorgensen drives middle on Ume, and that is going to be an archer's ball. Into the game for the Lions for the first time is Kian Oma Jones. Gaining plenty of experience with Barking Abbey's D1 team. 
Now into the game for the first time in this WBL Championship clash between the London Lions and the Cardiff Met Archers. Ken drives baseline, fires it across to Harry, extra pass to Jorgensen, Jorgensen puts up the three, and it is good. Now it's online and it's down to 19 points. The Archers still believing they can do this. They're just not going away. Jorgensen goes under the screen from Leonard, Leonard pulls up. Omar Jones gets the rebound. It's a great initial impact for the youngster. Leonard calling out the play, getting doubled. Shanna goes past Kian. Snakes past her, puts in the layup. It's another great finish from the youngster. Here comes Jorgensen. Off the screen. Just to find Warren inside. Warren gets it, puts up the, the layup on the post move, and it is good. Archers with an immediate response. They just need to string together a couple of defensive stops here. They've got to make sure that they're getting the stops, they're getting the other way. They're running. Shrek puts up the three. No good, chases her own rebound. Harry collects. Finds Jorgensen. It's a big minute here for the Archers. Warren with the ball. Finds Jorgensen. Jorgensen curls into the middle. It's Roy. Roy took in. Back to Warren in the middle. Five seconds on the shot clock. Goes, fakes the handoff, goes right down the middle of the floor, rolls in the lefty finger roll. And it's down to 17. Her teammates loving it from Levi Warren. Here comes Leonard. Warren steps out on the hedge. Jorgensen gets round. Trett for three in the corner. That is a big three from young Trett. Takes it back to a 20-point game. Here comes Jorgensen. Kian for three. Just off. A little bit strong. Jana throws it ahead to Omar Jones. Which is back to Leonard. Leonard comes tight off the screen, finds Trett. Trett goes past Harry. Puts the layup off the backboard and it is good. And the lead is back to 22. The London Lions youngsters making a real impact here at the end of the game. Just to make sure the Archers can't get back into it. Jorgensen to Warren. Warren finds the shooter on the wing. Also another rebound by Trett. Kennedy Leonard pushes the other way. That's past Kian. Takes past Warren. Dumps off to Omar Jones. Omar Jones up top to Lavinia at the free throw line. And that 18 footer is good. And that's going to be a time out for the Cardiff Met Archers. An incredibly timely run by the London Lions. Their youngsters really stepping up to the plate over the last couple of minutes to ensure that the Archers but just as they were gaining momentum, couldn't get back into it. Some impressive displays there from Trett, from Jana, from Lavinia. Homer Jones coming in and getting an offensive rebound. After his last time out, Coach Clark must be a lot happier with the efforts there, especially for his younger players. That run really taking the stuffing there out of the archers. So come back out onto the floor. Jorgensen, Shanahan, Harry, Bunyan and Roy. Three young Welsh under 18s. All on the floor at the same time for the archers. Shanahan, long-time Welsh international as well. And here come the Lions. Kuzmanovic back into the game. One of the Lions players, forgetting they were supposed to be on, Leonard out of the game. We've also got Jana, Trett, Oma Jones and Lavinia. So Jorgensen gets the ball over the halfway line for the Archers. Harry. Looks like Lavinia is going to be called for that foul on the post up. It's Roy looking for position down in the block. It's going to be an archer's end line. Harry to inbound the ball. Finds Bunyan. Bunyan dribbles out. Jorgensen. Cross to Harry. Harry drives past Trep. Finds Shanahan in the corner. Shot clock enters single digits. Shanahan under pressure from Jana. Finds Roy in the post. Roy looks to go baseline. Spins back out. Shanahan. Stripped on the shot, collects it, 
Just about gets it up on the rim, can't get it. Karis Roy with the big rebound. Bunyan drives past Kuzmanovic, throws up the layup and it is good. Great finish from Bunyan. Playing it in with perfection off the glass. Archer 65, Lions 87. Jorgensen right on Kuzmanovic's hip. Omar Jones looking to take Bunyan off the dribble. Fumbles it straight to Lavinia and Lavinia drains the baseline short corner too. And Shanahan on the wing. Bunyan sets the screen. Shanahan still with the ball. Lavinia called for another holding foul. The Lions not yet. No, the Lions in team fouls. So that'll be two shots for Karis Roy. Roy makes the first one for her first points of the game. Roy misses second. Bunyan is clattered on the rebound. Lavinia picks up another foul. And it's going to be two shots for Bunyan. But Lavinia checks out and Crocker will check back in for the remaining 1 minute 53. First one rolls off left for Bunyan. And the second one rolls in for Bunyan. Archers 67, Lions 89. Jorgensen guarding Kuzmanovic. Over to Omer Jones, Trett on the right wing. The Janna in the corner. It's a long two, and it's good. Just inside the line, spinning off the baseline screen. Comes to a stop, nails it. Ball with Roy in the post, she turns. And she gets hit in the head as she goes to pivot. And that is going to be another two shots for Karis Roy. Lavinia just fouled out the series of fouls in quick succession. And another foul for the Lions. First one good for Roy. Only th Roy's third game in the WBBL, but featuring heavily for the Archers D1 team. And she makes the second. Kuzmanovic brings the ball over the halfway line. Less than 90 seconds left here. Trett pops for three. It's long. Bunyan goes up for the rebound, manages to get hold of it. Under pressure, finds Roy. Roy pitches the Jorgensen. Archers are off running. Harry attacks. He's looking for the corner. Not enough power on the pass, and Omer Jones with the steal. Trett across to Jana. Kuzmanovic looking to drive past Jorgensen. Over to go. Fires the long pass over to Omer Jones. Straight into the hands of Robin Lewis on the Archers bench, and it's going to be a Cardamount Archers ball. Less than a minute left here at Archers Arena. Here comes Jorgensen. Pass is tipped, but Bunyan gets a hand on it. For it's stolen by Jana. The rolling pass to Omer Jones. She keeps her footwork. Composure on the finish. Her teammates are going wild. Took her first points in the WBBL. It's a great moment for a young player. Shanahan with the finish. Here comes Kuzmanovic. Got a seven second difference between shot and game clock. Clocker drives right into Roy. Shot blocked by Karis Roy. She collects the rebound, finds Shanahan. Bunyan looks for Harry. Jana has it. Bunyan goes for the reach. Not down to the ground. Clocker finds Omer Jones. 
She just misses. Ball is tipped out by Clocker. And it's going to be a Cardiff and Archer's ball with 3.4 seconds left in the game. Both teams' benches going crazy for the youngsters. No dribble the clock out. And it is full time here at Archer's Arena. Final buzzer has gone. And it is Cardiff Met Archer's 71, London Lions 93. The Lions continue their dominance at the top of the standings. Or the Archers fall to four and eight. The Lions moving on to 10 and one. For the visiting Lions, Stephanie Ume leading all scorers with 19. Beckford Norton and Breen both with 14. And Kennedy Leonard with 13 points and 11 assists. Paige Robinson collecting 10 rebounds for her side and for the Archers. Shannon Hatch leading the team with 16 points, including a pair of threes. Marley Ball with 12. Shanahan the only other Archer in double digits. Points for the young Archers Welsh stars in Roy, Harry and Bunyan. There some great late performances from the London Lions junior stars. Omer Jones with two, Lavinia with six before she fouled out. Trep with five, Jana with six and a couple of nice finishes. Coach Steph Collins will probably be slightly happier with this performance compared to when the two teams faced off just a couple of weeks ago. But ultimately, I think that for the Archers, they think that 93 points is too many to be giving away. For the Lions, they scored higher than their season average and they'll probably be quite pleased to take the victory back to London. Their only defeat of the season remains with the loss to Seven Oaks Suns and they've continued since winning the WBL Trophy with victories on Wednesday and today. Okay. The Archers are going to look to bounce back against the Oakland Wolves next week with tough games with the Riders and a doubleheader against the Suns to follow. Yeah. Steph Collins is ready to join us for an interview, so we'll be with her in just a second. Stay tuned. Hey Steph, here again, a tough defeat to top of the league. How, how are you feeling after a game like that? look at that scoreboard and you can think of a, a number of things. Um, for us, defensively, we have to be better uh, to allow that many easy baskets. Um, so I know we have to go away and, and think about that and work on that. Um, but offensively, you know, we found a nice rhythm today. Um, you know, they play an aggressive up-tempo style. We managed to, you know, play some nice basketball out of the offense and find some good scores for us. So quite pleased with that. That's good for us. Because um, obviously the last time we played them, you know, it was a difficult journey down to London. Um, you know, we only scored 45 points. So I think we've made some improvements in that end. But again, it comes down to our composure. Um, you know, there's sometimes some silly turnovers and then they go on a run. So, you know, we'll learn from it. Uh, but really nice to see today some of our up and coming juniors get on and play some really good minutes for us. So Karis Roy, Izzy Bunyan, Maisie Harry, they were all fantastic. Um, and, and really pleased to see Levi Warren come in. Um, she's been a veteran with this squad, but she's, there was a real confidence with her today, and it was great to see her, her minutes on the floor. As a long-time senior GB basketball player, you must be happy to see both sides play with loads of promising youngsters. I know that some of the promising youngsters were scoring against you, yeah. but you, you must be happy from sort of a developmental point of view. No, and that's the thing, like the WBL is such a great league for these junior players coming through because they're getting the opportunity to play at a high level and they're playing against some of their role models, some of the people that already played with the GB international team and, you know, have played and had that experience, um, you know. So I think for them, it's a, it's a great opportunity and it's great to see both squads, you know, trying to support that development of the British talent. After a tough game on Wednesday with the one-point victory and then going again today, the, starting to feel a little bit of momentum with the side. Are there some tired legs out there? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's tough, right? I, mean, I think everyone across the league is, is dealing with it because we've, you know, we've had to 
given the, the COVID situation, kind of try to cram as many games in as possible. And we had one hell of a journey to Durham on Wednesday um, and managed to get that win. So I knew today was, you know, we had to manage people and, you know, there's some niggles running about obviously we didn't have Mara or Chris on the floor today and you know like they're a big factor within our setup but I'm really proud of how everyone responded and we came with the right energy today. Looking ahead to the next game you have the Oakland Wolves and with games against the Riders and a double header against the Seven Oaks Suns after that are you really looking at this Oakland's game as one to target? Yeah I mean if anything we take it day by day we take it game by game like you know like I think that's the mentality we have to have because I think there is probably about nine or ten games left in the regular season already so for us, it's coming back to you know rest tomorrow, come to training Monday, um, and then think about the next game. Thank you for your time, and good yeah. luck for the rest of the season. Cheers, Tom. Another game done here at the Arch Arena, but have you ever wondered how we do it? Here's a behind the scenes look at how we do it on the Cardiff, Cardiff Met Sports Broadcasting course. So today I was responsible for the GFX, that's motion graphics, and to be honest, the thing that I enjoyed the most was being able to take full responsibility for clocking the scores and make sure that everything was running to uh, the sheet that we had basically. And uh, the main thing that I learned was timekeeping. Uh, keeping on top of the score, on top of what's going on in the match. Crosser, but the archers back there. While actually concentrating on my responsibilities, so the main thing I learned today. When people took the slumber on you, pretty brown skin, baby, I can see the summer on you. You see all the bad. Marley Ball trying to get past the Angela Wade. I ain't surprised at all. Seen them rise and fall. When up the mountain, it was. Last time I was on one of the tighter shots, which that was a good challenge. I think at the start it was. Kind of follow the action, which is quite tough. I'm really like, I've got to end up sort of getting more emotional shots. Macy, thank you very much. Drain the three, seven, nothing. They've they lead in this. It was very enjoyable. Um, like I said, the main thing I've been going along is it's really fast paced, um, back and forth. It's not a sport that I've covered too much recently, but it's been really enjoyable. Yo, 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 mess up and move. Yeah. I work too hard for it. Yeah, yeah. Lions are top of the league. What makes them so dominant? Yeah, I think we saw today that they've got strength all over the court. They've got probably the best backcourt in the league. Kennedy Leonard put on another display today. Cassie Breen was relatively quiet and was still a really good contributor for them. And then Stephanie Ume came off the bench, led the team in scoring. Her and Paige Robinson dominated the rebounds. So they got strength in all areas. Some teams it's easy to focus on one thing or another. These guys, you have to try and stop everything and it's so difficult. Yeah, and you talk about strengths. What strengths would you take from the Archers team today? Yeah, they, they, they scored more than they normally do and they were missing a couple of players as well. And they'll be hoping for Christina Pekicha back soon. She, she could have matched up quite well with someone like Stephanie Ume. You know, they, their performances of their young players were really impressive. Steph just mentioned about Maisie Harry, Izzy Bunny and Karis Roy. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think the way that they played, even though the game was, the game was sort of there, sort of wasn't, they can be really pleased with that. Yeah. Uh, and I think they've got plenty to take forward to Oakland's. Looking forward now, what do you expect from the rest of the season from both teams? Yeah, I think Lions are going to be looking to try and continue on a roll. They're, they're desperate for silverware, they've not won much for a while. And it's the same with their men's side. They're both teams on last weekend and they're both looking to get more and more silverware and build yeah. that culture of winning. For the Archers, they've got a big game against Oakland's Wolves next week. Hovering around the same place in the table, that needs to be one that they need to make sure that they win. Because if they, with the following games against Riders and a double header against the Seven Oaks Suns, those are two really difficult teams to play against. So they need to make sure that Oakland's game is a win. And Tom, your man of the match today? I think it's probably got to go to Stephanie Ume coming off the bench for the London Lions and being a real difference maker. Great. Well, it's all over here at the Archers Arena where the Lions took a win over the Archers. But a reminder that the Archers are off to the Oakland Wolves on Wednesday. That's it for us from us here today. I'm Ali Silk signing off from a great day of basketball. Have a great Easter everyone.
Lynn Davis of Great Britain. Eight decimal zero seven. Morning.